On our show today, we have a very special guest. He is none other than the president of the Sri Lanka Tennis Association, Mr. Iqbal bin Isaac. Thank you very much, Mr. Isaac, for accepting our invitation and featuring on the show today. Good evening, Martin. Firstly, I would like to thank News First and Maharaja Group for getting involved in tennis development. And we are very happy that you have visited the association today and interviewing us to see the pros and cons of tennis and the development that is going on here. My first question, Mr. Isaac, is that uh, uh, what is Sri Lanka's status at this point of time? In the Davis Cup, we are in Group 3. And uh, in the Fed Cup in the Asia Group, we are in Group 2. In that's, uh, the Davis Cup is a men's and the Fed Cup is the ladies. So we are in Group 2 in the ladies and Group 3 in the men's. We, in the past, we were in Group 2 in the men's and this year we were demoted to Group 3. And Davis Cup means it's a world tennis where all the countries take part and we are in the Asian group now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ask me very frankly, we can all, we can qualify to the world group. And uh, you asked me a certain question earlier before the interview whether we could ever play it. people like Nadal and Pedro. Yes, we can. But we have to win group three, then go to group two, qualify from them, go to group one. And then in the next group, we have the opportunities of playing them. And before the interview, also we spoke about it extensively about how we could get to uh, play with and against uh, the Rafa Nadals and of course the Roger Federer. On paper, it is just a three-year time period, right, that we could you know play them because Asia number three. If it's Group three and then Group two in Asia, Group one, and thereafter you could go to the world stage and then play compete in the Wimbledon's and the U.S. Opens. Uh, shifting my attention from um, the stance of Sri, La Sri Lanka tennis compared to the world stages. I would like to pose this question from you about this organization's perspective. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the structure of Sri Lanka Tennis Federation and uh, the key people involved and what is their roles and responsibilities, Mr. Isaac. The Sri Lanka Tennis Association is the governed body for tennis in Sri Lanka and it is run by committee members of 30 and they are elected by the affiliated clubs. We have around 38 affiliated clubs and when it comes to elections, they nominate the names and based on that, they are elected to the committees. So in these committees, we have uh, various committees for the development. We have in the finance committee, we have one of them will be looking after the finance, sponsorship, tournament and matches, outstation development. So we have various committees appointed the structure of the thing is that we have six vice presidents appointed at the AGM, the annual general meeting, six vice presidents, and one from the schools association also, who will be looking after the interest of the schools association. Then we have, uh, the, uh, we have the secretary, we have four assistant secretaries, we have the treasurer, assistant treasurer, and we have another 14 committee members. So the total is 28 there plus another two of them from the schools association who will be looking after the interest of the girls section and the boys section. So totally we have 30 of them who is managing the national body. So one interesting point that I kind of took from Mr. Isaac's answer on that question was the school uh, tennis association. You said one vice president is taking care of the uh, game in the school association. We have one vice president from the schools association. Mm -hmm. But we have, we also have two committee members. One who's looking after the girls. How many shop. schools are playing tennis at this we point have, of at time? The moment, the we island. have over seventy schools taking part. Seventy schools. 70 taking schools. Part. All those schools are from the city limits. What I mean is Colombo or Kandy. Do we have uh, schools no, we playing have, outside? We, we have many of them from the outstations. Colombo, we have about uh, about fifteen of them in Colombo. The others all are in the outstations. And uh, when we talk about. Uh, the impression, I guess, created uh, among the general public is tennis is a sport that is played by the elite. Uh, maybe that was the case back in the days when the tennis sport in Sri Lanka was started in 1915. What are the measures taken by the uh, Sri Lanka Tennis Federation to kind of uh, develop this game beyond those 70 schools? We have the Outstation Development Committee, which looks into all these things, and uh, they go out of Colombo and we visit all the clubs and from the clubs, we started at the clubs, a lot of children taking part in that, but now we are also going to the schools. And the schools, some of the, I'm very happy to say that some of the schools have their own tennis courts now in the outstations, mm -hmm. and also in Colombo, many mm -hmm. schools have their own. 
So this is a part of the development and we are encouraging them to put more courts also. Mm -hmm. We have about, uh, we have about 170 odd courts in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. and a lot of them are in the schools as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our development program, we are looking forward to go to other areas also. Right now we have 12 districts, mm -hmm. 12 uh, centers I should say, where we have, uh, we have centers in Bandaravela, Kandy, Nigambo, Kurunagala, Batiklo, where we have three hard courts there, mm -hmm. Trinkamali, which we just started a few days ago, and uh, then like that we have many places where we have centers and our coordinators who have been appointed to those areas, they visit the schools and they introduce the sport to them and uh, some of them join other clubs, they join our programs which are conducted in the outstations and that's that's how we get the talent uh, talent coming here and more, many of the outstation players are ranked in our system today in, in the top. Do you have players you know playing tennis in the Jaffna eastern side maybe south yes. and the east yes. covering yes. entire area? We have, uh, we have clubs playing in uh, Jaffna, Batiklo, Trinkamali, Kurunayagala, Kandy, Nigambo, Matara and down south also we have a couple of clubs playing now. Likewise we have everywhere in the island. In a lot of places in the island I should say, not everywhere. But we have also, we also have in Matale, which mm -hmm. was, uh, Matale was not very active but mm -hmm. we've started and now they're very active. And they're also having some tournaments next month. Mm -hmm. Likewise we are going to the other areas also where we are going to have a lot of uh, clubs involved. This week we are going to Badulla mm -hmm. for some promotional work and there are three clubs in Badulla who are not affiliated to us. So we are helping them in various ways and getting them also involved in the development of the sports. And also our coordinators are going to areas there also in, in, uh, in, uh, in Badulla mm -hmm. and areas. So a lot of schools where we have started tennis in those areas also and we are happy to say that a lot of them are playing tennis today. Uh, let's assume an individual who is watching this particular interview from a viewer's perspective, if they want their kid to be playing tennis, take tennis as a sport, what is the cost and how will they be able to kind of, you know, enroll themselves to this particular sport and then, you know, progress from there on? You see, it's not very costly, I should say. It's, it cost them about about 1,000 rupees to be a member of a club, 1,000, mm -hmm. 1,000, 1, 3,000. So is, is that the cost for one to get a membership at any clubs that is those 38 clubs that you spoke about? Yes. Yeah. And also I should say that I mean where we are having these classes like the coordinators are conducting it's most of the time free. Mm -hmm. The coordinators don't charge anything from them unless of course they go for private coaching and things like that. So the coordinators our job is to see that they get it free. So the coordinators don't charge anything. We have the association, we pay the coordinators and we send them to various areas. Next question I kind of, you know, that comes to my mind is that uh, obviously for players to um, show their class and uh, show that they are belonging to this particular sport, uh, they should be participating in competitions. What type of competitions that uh, the Sri Lanka Tennis Association has uh, organized all around the country for these individuals to showcase their talent? Yeah, our tournament calendar is out at the start of the year okay. and we have a full calendar where we have the junior events, the senior events, then the, our nationals. The whole thing is updated in the past itself, you know. So we have the whole calendar and we have many tournaments. That is made available on the website. It's on the web. So and there is uh, an official another, website. And another good thing is, I mean, we are online today and because of that, this is very, very beneficial for all the outstations. You know, no, it's not like in the past where you have to come to Kalambo to your entry to enter a tournament. But now, they can enter from wherever they want, from Jaffna, from Batiklo. They can enter the tournament from there and they will know when their matches are also played. On this day, their matches will be played. So everything is online. So it's we have made it very, very simple for them. Their rankings are online. Everything, any information that you want about tennis on their rankings, when their matches are fixed for what time, everything is online there. So they only have to check and come for the matches. Many years ago, it was totally different. Players from Kala, from the outstations have to come here mm -hmm. to enter for the tournament. It was done all manually then. Agreed. And uh, then they had to go back to their areas. They had to come another day to see the draw where they win their matches. So here from the first, from the first round onwards till the finals, everything is programmed, it's put online. 
So let's assume if somebody who's coming from Jaffna, a very good player who wants to take part in a competition in Colombo, uh, does Sri Lanka Tennis Association provide accommodations and uh, requirements? Do they? Well, we don't have that facility, but we have provided accommodation to some of them. Some, some of, of them. Some of the top players yeah. who find it very difficult to travel and things like that. We, we have a few rooms here, two rooms, so we provide them with that facility. We have done that thing, yes. Also, you, talk, you, you were speaking about the corona thing. I must tell you that we were one of the first sports to start here after the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And we had got permission from the Ministry of Sports and also from the health, they checked up and we have already conducted a couple of tournaments. And I'm very happy to say that Sri Lanka was not that, not badly affected. And even the government did a good job in containing the whole thing. So we, we had some unfinished tournament, the Nationals, which we completed a few days back. And we have a full tournament schedule that is going on. Uh, and uh, I've got a very interesting point to kind of tell our viewers that uh, Liato Fias and Nishikori was beaten by Sri Lankans back in the days at age group levels. Talk to us a little bit about that particular wonderful story that uh, all of us would like to hear. We had Franklin Emmanuel who beat Nishikori many years ago when he came for a tournament in Sri Lanka. And also Umesh Walupindi who beat Leander Pais after winning Junior Wimbledon. Before he beat, sorry, uh, before he won Junior Wimbledon here in Sri Lanka. So we have the talent. We have a lot of them like that. Then we have uh, we have Hashina who beat Qureshi, one of the Pakistani top players who won the U.S. Open, who reached the U.S. Open finals. So we have the talent, but very unfortunately, most of our children at the age of 14 they stop for their education. And That's a question that I wanted to ask. All the viewers also wanting to ask that question. You have players who can beat the Nishikoris and the Leonto Fizers who are top players who had played in the Wimbledons with high top, top class players. Why we are not like, why we have not gone that far? What's the, what's the issue? One thing I should say is unfortunately education is a must in these Asian countries and many of the kids, they stop their playing tennis at the age of 14 because of their O levels and then again for their A levels. So this is the area where we where we have to concentrate because we are also trying to get some players to commit full time, which we find it difficult because every parent wants to get their kids educated. So this gap is the thing that is making the difference and also the traveling abroad, which is very, very expensive for our Asians. We find it very difficult because to be a professional tennis player, you've got to travel around the world and play all the so why don't the Sri Lanka Tennis Association fund those players if you feel that they could get to the next level? Well, we find it very difficult. Unfortunately, we don't have any funding or any help coming from uh, the government. They, although they have promised to do some funding and help us from now onwards, but they are the new minister let's hope things The National work Sports out. Council was he, appointed recently. Correctly, yes. So we are looking at... Uh, so most probably things would change and uh, where we could produce some of the top players also who will be travelling around. But like I told you earlier also, we have a lot of parents who have taken this very seriously and they travel with their kids abroad. Some of them are in Sp training in Spain, like various countries, some of them are training in US. So we have individually parents taking their kids and going to various places and uh, taking part, which is good for, good for tennis and good for the sport in Sri Lanka also. So when you talk about uh, the funding, I'm like tempted to ask a question. Uh, what are the costs that are involved in terms of uh, administrating or managing this particular organization? And uh, how much of money are we talking about here? Well, our association, I should say, we don't get any funding from, any, any, from the government. We don't get any funding. We have been running mostly on sponsorship. We have a very, very efficient committee. And there are times that we put our money is also around this place sometimes for various things, you know, like uh, now we, uh, when it comes to wheelchair tennis, we have to go to people and get sponsorship and we are very happy to see ICT who's sponsoring the wheelchair. We are looking at somebody who's going to sponsor the Davis Cup team and we have spoken to a couple of banks, but unfortunately with this COVID thing, things have changed. Likewise, we have the, under, the junior squad that is there. We have the under 10s where we have about 7,000 kids taking part in this tournament. And we had a sponsor who has also withdrawn now. So mostly, uh, mostly all our tournaments are done on sponsorship. 
So Hello. one question that I want to ask uh, from you, Mr. Isaac, is now, uh, you said uh, at the age of 14, parents stop uh, good players from kind of progressing in their careers. What happened to Umesh Walupille and Franklin Emmanuel? You see, what happened to Umesh is that he also stopped at that age because of his studies and subsequently he got a scholarship for tennis in USA. He went there and he was uh, more concentrating on his studies and he's given up tennis. So a lot of kids here, they reach number one, number two in Sri Lanka and the opportunities are there for them to apply for a scholarship to other countries. So they apply for scholarships and go there. So at this point of time, who are the players that us as audience, uh, people who want to follow tennis in Sri Lanka, can look forward to? We have a lot of youngsters who are playing tennis now. We have a girl by the name of Angelica Kurira. She's about 15 years. She's our, she was the national champion. Then we have Anika Sinivirata. Who, was, who won a bronze medal at the... She, she won the Nationals this year. And she won the bronze medal at the South Asian... She won the bronze medal at the South, South Asian Games. Also, yes, she won the bronze medal at the South, in the singles event. And in the women's team event, we won a silver medal. So the talent is there. We also have a lot of others also like uh, in the... in the We have Tehan Vijayman, uh, Chatu. Then we have Shamal Disanayaka who has been playing Davis Cup, who has been training in Germany and various places, who's playing Davis Cup for us. Then we have another youngster, Yasita. So we have many youngsters, these are just a few names that are coming to my mind. We have many youngsters and we have a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. But well, harvesting that talent and going up is the most difficult thing. Talk to us a little bit about uh, the connection that you have with the International Tennis Federation and the governing body that governs tennis from an Asian context? We are, we are affiliated to the International Tennis Federation and we work with them very closely. In fact, we have one or two of uh, committee members also who are in the International Tennis Federation. One of them are in the Davis Cup, uh, Davis Cup Committee and uh, that's uh, no other than the present Olympic Committee Chairman, uh, President Suresh Subramaniam. Then I have an uh, interest in wheelchair tennis, which I like to, I'm very passionate about. So I'm in the wheelchair committee in the International Tennis Federation and also in the Asian ATF, Asian Tennis Federation. And we promote a lot of wheelchair tennis and all in Asia. And we, we conduct uh, three tournaments in Sri Lanka for, for our wheelchair players. These are all soldiers who, have, who are differently abled. Mm -hmm. And in this sport, we are doing extremely well, I should say. In Asia, we are, I should say we are about number two or three in Asia. And in the world, we are about a number 14, 15. Mm -hmm. Our rankings sometimes come down in the world rankings because we find it difficult to play some of the tournaments there. We have to at least play 20 tournaments traveling in Europe, which we find it very difficult for financial. So whatever possible we send them, we have a sponsor, that sponsorship is not enough. And uh, on any day, they'll be, they'll be the top players in the world. We have beaten, we have beaten the number four, five, six in the world also in various tournaments. But our rankings go down because we don't play that many tournaments. So our guys play in the Asian circuit. So we have three tournaments in Sri Lanka and this year we are hoping to also have the qualifying rounds for the World Cup in Sri Lanka. And many times we are qualified for the World Cup. So when we go there we beat most of the teams but uh, either so we, it stops there. And uh, we, we, our, our players have won most of the way, uh, tournaments in Asia. So one, I, this, these two names are still on my mind, the two individuals who beat Leanto Fais and of course Nishikori. I guess with the support from the government, hopefully you get the support that you require. Maybe we should be able to retain those high class players and get ourselves kind of, you know, book a place in the world arena in the sport of tennis. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Isaac, for accepting my invitation to kind of enlighten us about the sport in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Martin. And I would also like to thank News First and also Maharaja organization for giving us this coverage and taking uh, and promoting this sport tennis and also to the Ministry of Sports, hoping that they would also help us a lot in the future where the Minister has also promised a lot of help for us and also the players. Thank you very much and also to my committee and to the development committee which we have here. Thank you very much. Dr.